Hey, what's up, everybody? Brian from ReviewTheWorld.com. Wait, something's funny. Okay, I know what's up. This is a house that Bill built. This is uh, VeggieMacabre.com. If you've seen his videos, I'm sure you have. If you haven't, you need to check them out. Uh, he does a lot of them right here in this office. He's got this beautiful backdrop. Uh, basically, it is a pop culture smorgasbord over here. Uh, it's a buffet of buffoonery. I love it. Everything from Sergeant Slaughter to a zombie Ram Man. I mean, sometimes in his videos you don't really get to see all this stuff, but I've 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 poured over every detail. Behind me here, I mean, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention all of these awesome action figures. Tells from the Crypt Keeper, love it. Um, Showbiz Pizza, he did an article on that, uh, the mug. But uh, so Bill's on his way home. I got here a little bit early. He left me a key under the mat. Um, we got something special today that we're going to be doing, something kind of fun. I'm calling it Japan by way of North Carolina, because we're here in Winston-Salem. Um, earlier today, I was in Charlotte at Heroes Con, big convention, a lot of great artists, comic book, memorabilia, and there was a guy selling, literally as we were on our way out the door, Japanese authentic snacks and, and drinks. And so we got a couple things, so I'm going to spring this on Bill. I think first and foremost, the big catch of the day, uh, green tea Kit Kats. In a big bag. They didn't have a smaller size, so we went full in. Now, Bill loves hot stuff. He's done a variety of spicy challenges. Uh, the guy's in. I don't know how he does it. Um, that's his secret. Uh, but from Calby, um, hot and spicy chips. About a year ago, I did a, a Calby um, prawn, uh, garlic prawn chip, which was cool. So I've had something from Calby, but the hot and spicy, very excited. Um, Ramoon, I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but it's, uh, if you've never seen these, uh, huge in Japan, you, they've, you know, in manga and in anime, you often see teenage characters drinking them. They're very fun. I I've had them before, but I don't think I've really ever documented these on Review the World in, in the 10 plus years. It it's got a gimmick. I'm going to show it to Bill. He's never seen this before. So that's what's on the agenda for right now. I think actually I might hear him coming in before I head out there and greet him. I got an item for the wall. Now, it's not quite as cool as mo many of these. Running a website, uh, I often buy things, and two, three, four, five years will pass, and they just never find their way onto the blog for whatever reason. Um, they get cut. Uh, something else that might be perishable jumps ahead of it. But I've had this little, uh, let's see. And it's something small, so I thought it would fit here nicely. Uh, these mini racers. Um, so I, I, I've literally, I've, I envisioned a video where I was playing with these, maybe in a shopping mall or something, I don't know, but uh, for years I've had these and they've yet to make to review the world, so now they have a new home. They've left the greater Cincinnati area, and, and Bill, we'll just put those right there. All right, I'm going to meet Bill. I hope he doesn't mind I've used the facilities and everything, you know. Uh, but, uh, drop the Cincinnati bow tie off in there, but this is going to be good. <laughs> Alright, everybody, as promised. How's it going? I'm Will with Veggie Macabre, and I'm so glad that my buddy, yeah. Brian, uh, came to North Carolina. I flew down here. I literally grew wings and flew down here for this. And uh, you've been a gracious host. Uh, we've had a, a good day. Uh, Japan. I've never been. I know where it's at. Yeah, and maybe one day, you know, you will touch base uh, in Japan. Um, but today we're going to kind of time travel by way of junk food, which is always fun and dangerous. I think the Kit Kats might have to go last because they're the most interesting item, sure. I believe, of the three. Uh, well blended with many spices, resulting in savory, spicy flavor. Enjoy this hot and spicy taste. I love everything from Japan. It's just amazing to me that they can take a simple product and then turn it into a crazy cartoon like this potato chip. Yeah, there's a potato guy <laughs> wearing a sash. And like an old, you know, 1930s hat. Where he looks like he's saying something that's like... like yeah, he's got something. Don't go into the moat. Or yeah. I don't know what he's like telling us to do, but he looks really kind of, I don't know, perplexed. 
you can kind of get gist of them right there. But that's Japanese culture. I, I don't know. I mean, it's just so cool to me. And this is vacuum sealed, man. Like, it feels like there's actually, like, a hot air balloon bu bur trying to bust out of here. Let's come across the Pacific. Uh, okay. Oh, wow. wow. So, very colorful chips. That's I don't yeah. really know what I was expecting, um, but they're kind of a bright orange. And uh, hot and spicy is such a broad, general thing. That could mean anything. It really could. Mmm. Kind of better than I was expecting. That's delicious. Completely not hot and spicy. There's not even a remote sense of heat. I wouldn't say heat. I mean, I would say spice, but not... Uh, because there's things tickling my tongue, but not in a, in a hot way. I was looking, you know, I kind of was cheating and looking at the ingredients here as I had my first bite. And they have spices, but then in parentheses, they kind of go into detail. And they run the gamut here. Uh, cayenne, nutmeg, paprika, garlic, onion, black pepper, oregano, tamarind, coriander, cumin, mustard, ginger. Um, I got some for you. Clove, sugar, uh, soy sauce. Um... I, I could actually keep going on. Um, those are the more common ones, obviously. Um, but, uh. Whoa. That's the American version. Okay, okay. I would love to show. This, what, how I would describe it flavor wise, uh, is like uh, kind of a tomato y. It's almost like. Yeah. It's, dude, you know what this reminds me of? Um, and this is a very specific thing, but like like a Campbell's tomato soup with like some Tabasco put in it, which my wife has done before. You know, when we were in college trying to make a spread, you know, stretch a buck, sure. she would make like grilled cheese and tomato soup and, and put some hot sauce in it to just give it some extra life. This tastes very tomato-y um, to the palate, but it's got, you know, some spices on the back end that kind of make it fun. I was actually not anticipating any more than maybe one or two of these tops, but they're these are actually hard to stop eating. These are actually quite snackable. Yeah, I mean they're really good. Like they're, this is the the term savory. This is what I think of. Yeah. When it's savory, like it's like it has like a strong onion powder taste to it. Yeah. That's good. I think they're amazing. So Japan, uh, it's a point uh, in your favor. Um, the American equivalent. I guess I might as well. Uh, these are a little spicy. Okay, yeah, red hot flavored potato chips. Oh yeah, that's pretty red. In comparison, I mean, I mean, it's got the tingliness on the tongue. Not quite as hot as like a flaming hot lay, mm. but uh, I gotta tell you though, like. I, I can say this with no fail. Uh, Flavor-wise, man, these are... I mean, these blow it out of the Way park. Out of, yeah. If this was like a single, you know, a uh, grounder, this one is a grand slam. Like, I might give you that laundry list of different spices that are in here, and it's just so flavorful. Yeah, it I mean, really this is. is a great chip. So we've had some salty snacks. I'm going to wash it down. Oh, by the way... T-shirt, got it at the uh, con today, man. Very cool. We were talking uh, Super Mario Brothers 2, both our personal favorite of the Mario games. Happened upon the Shy Guys, doing a little homage to Five Guys, the burger joint. Um, shy Guys. So this is uh, Ramoon. As I've... And so, Bill, this is, you know, I'll try not to make a mess here in the living room, but um, sure for you is. at home, there. there's a marble in the top. And I actually, I, I've took in a, I've introduced this to a lot of people, and they're always baffled, you know, befuddled by this. Uh, actually, Swagger Mom, uh, Molly, your friend, my friend, uh, Chris, Audio Alpha, we went to an Asian market, and I actually introduced them both to this, and they were just completely freaked out by it. I mean, it is a little odd. So, you've got the marble in the top of the bottle, and then, and this is obviously probably not great for America, choking hazard, if you got kids around... But you punch out this little like stopper, and basically you 
apply force and push the marble down into the drink. I know what I'm saying probably sounds like a foreign language to you. You're trying to piece it together. Um, maybe I'll use the table. That's crazy. Now this is probably... Uh, it's not really chilled. I think it was in the car, so... Okay, no explosion. Uh, sometimes I've seen it fire back. So, trying to do the best... Yeah, you can see it on camera little sphere in there with bubbles on it and so the whole fun thing is like you drink it you know if you hold it the wrong way you're really not gonna get anything out uh, it, it's just a fun gimmick now we have glasses here that we're going to uh, try to pour it into now there's a wide variety of flavors there's more common ones like melon uh, strawberry uh, I believe there's a lime uh, a wide gamut of flavors. I went with something, again, trying to capture that whole Japan mystique. Uh, lychee. L-Y-C-H-E-E. -E. Um, if you're not familiar with lychee fruit, if you've ever been to a Japanese buffet or some Chinese buffets, you might find it. Um, the texture of lychee fruit is kind of weird, it, but the flavor is very good. Um, I don't know how I would really describe lychee fruit. Uh, it's very sweet. Um, but you're going to have it in, you know, soda form, so, another one of these excellent hot and spicy chips. Mm. Oh, wow, that's good. That's, um, God, that's typical Japanese fashion, I can't put my finger on it. I, you know... Maybe if I would have gotten grape or a flavor that's a little bit more common to the American palate, mm -hmm. um, it would be a better barometer for you know a, a novice to the to drink. But it's very cool. I mean, I guess imagine uh, this might be the best way to describe it to the average American consumer is you know think of a sprite, you know a flavored sprite. You know, it's got the fizziness and approachability of a, of a lemon lime soda. But um, it, it's it's fun. I mean, this guy to me always looked like a little alien bean. <laughs> And you know, keep it. Uh, put it out on your your balcony, your deck. You know, grow oh, a plant cool. out of it. Um, fun bottle. It's you know. This tastes like you know, uh, like dried fruit, like papaya. Yeah. This kind of tastes like. I don't know. That's right where my brain goes. Like papaya, like dried papaya or dried. Um, the papaya is actually like, like you know, if I was blindfolded. Like if I was blindfolded, like this does have an island sort of, which is a weird thing to say to describe a flavor, but it has like an island kind of. I can see that, yeah, I can see going that route. Yeah, it's very tropical, like a tropical fruit. A little bit of bitter behind it. Yeah, that's good, good stuff. So, I, Bill, I, I don't think I'm going out on a limb to say that Japan, by way of North Carolina, is two for two. I'll be honest with you, I'm impressed. But this could make or break the entire experience. This is where the money goes. Oh wow! So, oh, uh, see, there it is. This is like a spooky little cartoon character. Yep, there's got to be somebody. He almost looks like something out of a Miyazaki, you know, film. Um, then on the other side of the package, you can see the fields there. Um, now, green tea, when it's Americanized, is you know heavily sweetened, but. Uh, Proper green tea is much more of a... Okay, they're individually wrapped. That's kind of nice. But actual green tea, proper green tea, is a lot more of a muted flavor. Oh, God. These are cool looking. Individually wrapped. You know, Bill, I don't know what your plans are for uh, October, but if you're going to be handing out candy, if you have some of these left over, these give the kids something, you know, unique. Not get your house eggs. This looks like something that you get after a like, wow. like the best sushi restaurant in the U.S. Like some place like yeah. in, in like like L.A. And this is what you get after. Yeah, the they slip it with your bill. It wouldn't be like a cheesy little tiny mat. Now on the inside, it's not. You can tell that these have probably been shipped because they kind of melted. And oh, they've also of, been in the car. Yes, that's true. Yep. I'm gonna, uh, Break it in half. Another step. Trying to get right in there at you. So and, green tea. Uh, 
Is that what this is? This is... Uh, I can only... Well, there's another picture, I guess, that I should focus What's on. Frothy? Yeah, like a frothy, which I've seen... Uh, What's the other kind of tea? Uh, like a chai? Or not really chai. But oh, what's it called? There is another frothier green. Oh, man, my wife bought it and it was crazy expensive. And I was just like, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Some tea expert out there is going to gonna know exactly what I'm talking about. But, uh. Kind of think about that for a sec. You're right. That was not a normal Kit Kat. Hmm. It's like white chocolate. Yeah. But I don't want to cheapen it like that. Yeah. You know? Like it almost does taste like, uh, and I often go to this blind taste test method, but sometimes I think it's a good way to, to get to the crux, to the core of, you know, what you're trying. Right. If I was blindfolded, I may have said that's a vanilla Kit Kat. Mm -hmm. You know, it almost tastes more like those, which I was never a big fan of, but we'd have them sometimes when I was a kid. Those wafer, uh, not candies, but uh, yeah, cookies, the cookies, the wafer cookies yeah, that are like, it's two wafer, it's like a wafer, that's a wafer, and like. then inside there's like the sugary. This is way too light in comparison to the American Kit Like Kats. A, a wa these wafers that literally melt in your tongue, like if you, you, you know what they are, they're orange or sometimes pink. Mm -hmm. Basically wafers uh, with sugar in between them. This kind of tastes like that. Yeah, um, that's exactly what it tastes like. Normal Kit Kats are like really crunchy, very like kind of more of a cookie feel. And I like the uh, the texture of a, of, a, of a standard Kit Kat, you know, because you have that exterior kind of edge where it's a little bit thicker and you mm -hmm. can kind of... Yeah, I don't know, man. This one's unique. Um... It's I light. think of the three of them, this one's a conversation piece, absolutely. It's the most unique, and therefore, you know, it'd be great to spring upon party guests. But in terms of true snackability, mm, the chips, I would I would totally smash that bag. I mean, while we watch, you know, a flick, the drink was not bad at all. I've had Ramoon before. Um, this was to, for the video purposes and for Bill. So Ramoon, I'm, I'm totally cool with any and all flavors. The Kit Kat, though, I think the the packaging looks really nice. Like the packaging looks really nice. Like if you put them in like a glass bowl on yeah. a on a dining room table or something, people are gonna try it. It's very inviting. And I don't think somebody's gonna take a bite and be like, you what? know, no. toss it. But it does. I mean, Brian's exactly right. This tastes like a vanilla wafer. You know, the the long rectangle yeah, yeah, those cookies ones. that you get like at you know Costco for. You know, you can get a million for ten bucks. You know, I yeah. don't know. It's um, you find them everywhere. The vanilla little wafer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cookies. So I don't. Um, there's nothing really special about it. And I mean, green tea is a muted flavor, so I can't entirely hold it against them. And yet, uh, I don't know, man. I guess if you're gonna get weird, like let's really get weird. Right. I guess. So when I saw this, and I'm like, that is different. I guess my perspective. I want it to be really maybe different. Like, make it earthy. Like, some green tea is, is very earthy. Right. Make it taste like earthy, you know? Maybe it won't be for everybody, but like, it would stand out a little bit more. Put a bug in it. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Like, <laughs> fill it full of, like, like do what the English do, and all of a sudden you bite into something and it's full of jelly. And you're like, why What's is it full of jelly? Um, Kit Kats, like, I mean, there's nothing really right home about other than... It's very pleasant to look at. Yeah. I mean, it is very pleasant to look at. Those chips. These chips, uh, I know the package doesn't, you know, jump right out at you and really, you know, set the world on fire. But I'm telling you, man, and I've had my fair share of American-style chips. I'm actually looking for my next favorite chip because everything, I'm just sort of blasé on right now. That chip is like a warm bowl of ramen noodles. Yes. Like, I mean... A nice brothy... Yeah. yeah. some real, like, you know, like, maybe some Thai or Vietnamese soup, like mm -hmm. a hot pot or something. Yeah, they're, they're home runs, for sure. I'm telling you, this... If you like pizza-flavored stuff, because there's definitely something very tomato-y about these. Um, wow. Garlic, onion, there's a lot happening. Chips are awesome. Okay, Bill, well, we've got some work to do.
Yeah, we're, we're only, we're not, like, a, what, a fourth into uh, the RTW Veggie Macabre trip, so. Konnichiwa. Uh, oh, hi, Gazamas. Watashiwa, Brian, Bill, we're out of here. <laughs> yeah, I bow to you. <laughs> See you guys.